Hello, my name is John Freilich. I'm a hand surgeon at Panorama Orthopedics. Wrist fractures are a really common injury here in Colorado. Between the mountain biking and snowboarding and skiing and just the ice we get here, it's very common for people to fall and break their wrists. The management of these wrist fractures can be anywhere from a simple cast to requiring surgery. So the wrist in general is a pretty complex area of our body. In fact, that's basically all I do is wrist and hand surgery. If you end up and break your wrist, one of the things that we look at most commonly is whether that fracture extends into the joint surface itself. So if we look at a wrist, in general we have two bones, the radius and the ulna. This one has been fixed, you can see by the hardware that's present, that's the white area. Now if the fracture line comes up into the joint surface, that's the surface right here, then those are a little bit more complex and those oftentimes will require surgery, but not every time. The ones that don't require surgery usually have a fracture line that comes right along here that is outside or what we call extra articular, not involving the joint surface. One of the most important views to look at here on the radius is when we look at it on the side, this is the palm and this is the back of the wrist, is again we look at this joint surface and we're trying to look at this from the side and we want to know whether this joint surface looks almost like a U or a cup there that's holding the rest of the bones. But commonly what will happen is this joint area will actually be depressed or tilted backwards. And that's an indication that we need to go in there and fix that with surgery. Otherwise, the overall alignment of your wrist won't be maintained well and you're at higher risk for developing pain, discomfort, and arthritis down the road. If it's broken, we'll talk about the pros and cons of operative versus non-operative intervention based on the pattern of the fracture. We'll go over that together. And if we say decide we're not going to do surgery for this and you'd be better off being treated in a cast, that typically looks at about six weeks of immobilization. During that time, you'll come in a couple more times, usually about once every two weeks, take the cast off, get new x-rays, make sure everything's healing well. After you've gone through about six weeks of casting, then we convert you to a removable brace and start you working on some exercises. Now, some patients require some therapy afterwards. Each person's body kind of dictates who's going to need the therapy and who's not. Let's say that we end up and discussed your fracture and we decide that you would be better off with surgical intervention. What that entails is an outpatient procedure. It takes about an hour and a half to do the surgery itself. Oftentimes we'll give you an associated block that makes the whole arm go numb and as well as it'll be numb for several hours afterwards to help with pain control. In general, it's gonna be about six weeks that we're gonna do limited of nothing more than about five pounds to that, to that hand as far as activities of pushing, pulling, gripping, or grasping. Dependent on how complex the fracture is, sometimes we'll put you into a cast for a couple weeks after surgery. Other times we'll get you into a removable brace and get you working with therapy and get, trying to get your motion back as soon as we can. Some of the most common questions that I get are related around the recovery from a distal radius fracture. What I tell all patients is that in general, it's six weeks for the bone to heal, three months for you to get your strength back, and six months for you to kind of forget about the injury. And that's whether we do surgery or not. Initially after the injury, it's gonna be fairly painful and we do give you some medications to help with that, but we try to get you off any narcotic pain medications as soon as we can and just get you transitioned over to an ibuprofen or a Tylenol. One of the other things that comes up is people ask about getting back to activities such as yoga or snowboarding, mountain climbing or anything like that. In general, I tell patients our goal here is to get you back to doing everything you're doing prior to the surgery. Another important question that people ask is what is to expect with range of motion? One of the things we look at immediately post-injury is kind of the amount of motion you have, whether we're managing this operative or non-operative, whether you be a candidate for therapy. And the goal is to get you back to basically the exact same amount of motion you had prior to your injury to allow you to get back to all the activities that you want to get back to doing. We are happy to see you at any time if you have a fall or injury onto your wrist, you're having persistent pain or discomfort there. Uh, we'll come right in, we can get you a set of x-rays for you and evaluate whether or not it's broken.